realize hundreds of eyes are watching you every single day and how you respond to adversity, those eyes are learning from you. To be a leader, you need to stay calm, cool, and collected when those circumstances become really trying. We need to be an example of the behavior we want from our team. And today, we're going to be talking about leadership. Welcome to JT in the Raw, show 80, new Raw shirt and hat. I'm going to take that off, actually. Bad hair, but anyway. And uh, today we're going to be talking with JT in the Raw, where I just chew the thin on business and, and all sorts of stuff for small business, large business, uh, management of business, industry business, whatever it may be. My goal is simply to have you um, uh, think and do different in 2018. And today I'm going to be focusing on you. So, first of all, welcome to everybody from the Northern Hemisphere. Today is Australia Day. So, we've got a, a national holiday here down under. So, happy Australia Day to everybody out there. Um, and uh, so, welcome. Welcome to Show 80. Last week uh, in Show 79, I shared a two week challenge with you uh, a challenge where the goal was simply to be healthier to be more productive, and to be happier at work by staying in control of your day. And I shared a three-step challenge with you. Step one was to plan your next day before you go home for the day. Before you go home, you plan your next day. Number two was to block out your diary to do those tasks. And number three was then to stick to that schedule that you'd planned the next day. And following, and then follow this system for 14 days. So I was super excited to hear uh, from some raw viewers this week who thanked me for sharing the challenge. They are doing the challenge and they're even doing it with their team. Um, and this may this gave me a real warm and fuzzy feel uh, inside. So, uh, so thank you. I'm very grateful to hearing from some raw listeners who are doing the challenge. And I, it just helps me realize I am making a difference. Morning, Robin. Morning, Jordan. Morning, Owen. And good morning, Grant. How are you? Okay. Oh, morning, Liz. How are you? Okay, just a couple of uh, little announcements, I guess, at the beginning of the show is uh, thanks to Precore uh, here in Australia, I'm going to be doing a session um, in Melbourne on the latest changes to social media. The latest changes to social media. Morning, Maddie Wright. Happy Australia Day, Maddie Wright. I know you're over there in the US. Um, this is exclusive to uh, Anytime Fitness owners and managers. Uh, and uh, if you want to book a seat, you better talk to your pre-core rep to find out if you can come and find out the latest changes to social media. I'm also going to be speaking at Ursa this year, uh, which is in March. I'm going to be doing two sessions, two sessions. Um, and one of those sessions uh, is on social media again. It's on uh, the 20, Thursday the 22nd, how to run a successful social media campaign. And uh, Friday the 23rd, I'm doing a session on developing a winning culture in your business. So if you're heading to Ursa uh, or if you know anyone going to Ursa, please tag them in the comments below. Uh, I can always do with extra bums on seats in my sessions. Um, thanks, Jordan. Happy Australia Day to you. Maddie Wright, yes, go Federer. Uh, we're not not all of us are on the Chung train down under for the Australian Open, Matty Wright. Some of us still like those old blokes like the Fed Express. Uh, what else did I? Uh, you can also hear me speak because I did a um, I did an interview this week on the Fitness Business Podcast. That show will be coming out uh, in February, and that's on the why, when, and how to change your prices. So how to change your prices coming out in February. Um, and don't forget, you can see all the JT in the raw shows that I've ever done on our YouTube channel. So if you just put tube in the comments below, I'll send you the link. There's probably some stuff there that you can actually use for uh, staff training. So if you miss show 79, put 79 in the comments and I'll send you the link to the challenge that I set last week. The challenge, so put 79 in the comments. Uh, whether you're watching live or on replay, 79, I'll send you the link. And uh, if you want to spend the whole weekend with JT in the Raw, you can do that. 
Just put tube in the comments and I'll send you the link and you can watch all 80 shows back to back. You can have, what do they call that? Like some overload of JT in the Raw. Morning, JP. How are you over there? So this morning, I thought I would start off, though, with a bit of a rant. Um, and and it's, I, I, it doesn't matter where you are in the world. I think this is, this is relevant to you um, if you run a company. Forget about being in the fitness industry. If you run a company, here's a little rant for you because I was speaking with a client this week and um, here's what they told me. They said, I need some help, JT. How do I deliver a health and wellness plan for a company for 10 weeks for 140 people for 1000 bucks?" G'day, JP again. G'day, Stevie Jensen. How are you, Dr. J? Love your new uh, live shows as well for your group. Congratulations on launching them this year. Are you kidding me? Seriously, are you kidding me? A thousand bucks for 10 weeks for 140 people? So this company, this large dot-com company is prepared to spend 71 cents per employee per week on their company fitness program. You can't even buy a cup of coffee for this. Now I get budgets of budgets. I get big companies have got budgets and they've got to meet budgets. But seriously, seriously, don't insult your staff or degrade the value of a health and fitness program by offering pittance as an investment. This is just tokenism by this company tokenism it's just ticking a box to say we do health and wellness programs and in essence you do jack shit if you want true professionals as a company to come in and have a serious impact on the health and the the well-being of your staff you have to pay money you have to pay decent money to get a decent program. You've got to understand that the people that you want to come into your program and run your program are professionals. They're professionals just like you. And they deserve to be paid appropriately. So if you really, really want to help your staff with a corporate health and wellness program, then invest in them. Invest with the appropriate professionals in order to run a professional program. 71 cents per employee per week? You're kidding me. Now, I've got to blame the fitness industry a little bit for this. Just a little bit. Because we're often blinded by the flashing lights of being able to work with a company. And so we make an emotional decision rather than a logical decision. And so we're prepared to discount whatever we do in order to get the job, which may mean we don't end up getting, we run that whole job at a loss and that doesn't help anybody. So we need to set our parameters. We need to stick by our pricing, stick by our convictions, and that will help change the whole perception of what a health and wellness plan is for a company. We also need, as an industry, the fitness industry in Australia or in the US or the UK or in New Zealand, we also need unanimous support for a peak body and a registration system. So therefore, companies, when they don't know what to look for, they just look for quality control and that tick is given by a peak body. So as an industry, we need to do that. The fitness industry, we need better positioning internationally as experts and professionals, and that companies need to pay what you would pay for an expert to come in and work with your company. So let's get together. Let's work together here and let's reduce the healthcare costs and make people healthier with decent investments in the health and wellness plans that you're gonna roll out in your companies. Not a particularly emotional rant, but I hope it gets through to the people that need to hear about health and wellness plans. So feel free to tag anybody. Troy Morgan, you just missed my rant on health programs and plans for companies. So if you think you know anybody 
who is launching one of these programs this year and is also prepared to pay 71 cents per employee per week, tag them in the comments below and we might get 71 cents up to $71 and create some real change in health and wellness for employees. So, last weekend, I totally confused my daughter. Poor Zoe was looking at me with these bamboozled eyes. You see, she knew she was in trouble, but I wasn't raising my voice. Not at all. I wasn't changing my body language. I wasn't projecting any anger. I stayed cool, calm, collected, didn't get wound up, never lost control. You see, when you lead a sporting team, a department, a company, a business, or even a family, people are watching you. There are eyes watching you. They're watching and listening to what you think, what you say, how you show up, what you look like. They all have a direct impact on people that you are leading. G'day Jenny Phillips. G'day Sean Cosgrove over there in the UK. Happy Aussie Day over there, mate. Happy Aussie Day. Hey Jeremy. G'day Dan Newton. How are you? Um, good morning, Angus Campbell over there in New Zealand. How you respond will, de de will determine if your team or your family will come to you with problems and want to discuss anything. So if they come with a challenge or a problem and you fly off the handle then they're never going to come back to you because they watch how you respond when challenges are put in front of you. Okay, so you are going to miss sales. You are not going to close every single sale. Your team is going to make mistakes, whether it's on the, on the, on the sporting paddock or whether it's in the work paddock. Either way, people are going to make mistakes. Your kids, your kids are going to play up. They're going to push boundaries. This is all inevitable. But how you respond to these events and these activities shows your leadership. Now, for many of us, this is a great time of year. Everything is going swimmingly well. No real challenges at work. No real challenges at life. Everything is is going swimmingly well. And the last thing you expect is a curveball. But I can guarantee you one is coming. Now, when that curveball comes, you need to recognize that just a fleeting moment of frustration or anger or impatience is going to hurt and impact your team's morale. Again, whether that team be your sporting team, your business team, or your family. Now, as the leader, you must project calmness. You've got to project confidence and competency in that challenge. Even if you're feeling totally stressed out on the inside, on the outside, project confidence, project calmness, and project competence that you can solve the problem. Morning, Jace Lawrence. Your team are going to look to you for leadership. They're going to look for you to be in control and they're going to look at you as an example for how you respond. So at this time of year in our businesses, I want us to work on two things. Only two things and to work on these while things are going great for us. I want us to build our own self-awareness, Tom Hart. Happy birthday for the other day, Tanya Fantini, g'day, Andrew Hatfield, how are you? So two things I want you to work on while things are going great for you. First one is, I need you to build your self-awareness. I need you to understand yourself a lot better to sense when you're getting wound up. I need you to develop within yourself an early warning system that you're going to blow your stack so that you can then do something to get out of that situation so you don't blow your stack. Morning, Sean O. How are you? I really want you to work hard on this. I really want you to work hard on building this, understanding yourself, build that self-awareness to sense when you're getting wound up, when that's getting up to here, and before it blows, you're out. You're out of there. 
And that way you save that example of being negative in that situation. Secondly, I need you to think now, because you're in a positive headspace, how do I get back to this positive headspace when things are tough? Morning, Susan Morgan. I didn't even see you there. How are you? Um, hope you had a great holiday. It sounds like you had a good time up, up at the sunny coast. That was, that was pretty cool. Um, how do I get back to the headspace that I'm in? Because I'm in a positive one at the moment. How do I get back there when you find that you've actually had to get under that adversity? You see, all of this is important to running a fully functioning team. It's all important. Now, we know, as I said before, it's going to have some really powerful impact on team morale if we blow our stack. If we lose control, it has an impact on team morale. We need to maintain that stable, that grounded presence. And when you do, you're going to increase the likelihood that your team is going to feel far more comfortable coming to you with important information that you need to know. If they've got negative information, if they've got information about the business that they know is going to piss you off, they're going to feel intimidated and scared. But if they know that the way you react is in a cool, calm, competent way, then they're going to be more prepared to share that information with you. Now, what I'm aware of in all the years I've been in business is honesty will prosper in a company, department, or sporting team. When there's honesty and trust, then that de- that team, whether that be a company or that department, will prosper, or family even, that will prosper. And this has to be good for business. It has to be good for our life. So we need that honesty. We need that trust. So therefore, we have to shape our behavior. My challenge for you is to think and do different when it comes to your leadership. So I hope that sort of, as Susan said there, some wisdom here, JT. Yeah, I guess it's pretty deep for a, a, um, a weekend. I guess it's pretty deep for a long weekend here in Australia. But the point of this is I was dealing with clients this week where there was adversity in the workplace. There was adversity in their lives. And I just said to them, you've got to stay cool. You've got to stay calm and collected because people are watching how you respond and they will then replicate that behavior if that's what you're exhibiting in the workplace or in family. So that's what I want to challenge you to do, ladies and gents. Let's work on that. Okay, what's happening this week? G'day T, g'day Nikki, what's happening this week? Zoe returns to school this week. Yep, she's going into year four, so new teacher, um, probably some new school uh, classroom friends. So pretty excited in our house about a, a new school term starting. I know in Queensland you guys went back this week, so um, so Troy and Susan, I uh, hope Hope had a good week back at school. Um, on Wednesday, I get to work with three Anytime Fitness Clubs, and uh, we're going to be focusing on developing synergy between the, that's a big word, isn't it? Synergy between their personal goals and their club goals. We're going to do a six-hour workshop up there, um, really building a strong foundation for those businesses to conquer all the challenges that they're going to face over the next 12 months. Uh, on Friday, I've got the Industry Leaders Roundtable. Ooh, excuse me. Industry Leaders Roundtable for the uh, for the New South Wales personal trainers, and we're going to be dissecting um, challenges. You know the challenges that we run within our business. So, like a six week challenge or an eight week challenge for our clients or our members in the fitness industry. Um, so, we're going to dissect challenges to come up with the best business practices for challenges. So I'm pretty pumped up about that. G'day, Brianna, over there in the US. Are you freezing? How cold is it where you are? Um, so next week's meeting is actually going to be coming from, we're going to Wollongong to meet that meeting. Uh, Wollongong's on the coast of New South Wales. So I'm hoping that next Friday will be a hot and sunny day and I can do J10 the Raw from the beach and show all our Northern Hemisphere friends like Brianna that Australia is a beautiful country. More beautiful than it looks on any pictures. So, oh, by the way, if you're interested in um, me doing any work with your team, or if you're interested with me, um, or you guys joining the round table at any stage, please just reach out to me, send me a message, put a message in the comments, PM me on Facebook, drop me an email, ring me. You can't not find me, so please reach out. Okay, so I'm about to head off to the gym now. 
because uh, for those that are unaware from the Northern Hemisphere, uh, on Australia Day, we eat pavlova, we eat lamingtons, we have sausages. In fact, we probably eat way too much, so we're going to go and have a workout now. Um, but please remember, just as a summary, um, that uh, if you missed show 79, where I set you a challenge around staying in control of your schedule each day, put 79 in the comments below. John Menenti, good morning. How are you? Good luck, John Menenti, at the, with the Aussie Sevens girls uh, over the weekend at the Sydney Sevens rugby tournament. Good luck for them. Hope they go well. Charlotte Kaslick is, of course, Zoe's favourite player. So um, good luck, Johnny, at that. So, yeah, if you miss 79, put 79 in the comments below. I'll send you the link to the show. You can join the challenge. It's never too late to join this two-week challenge and jump on board and get in more control of your days at uh, at school, at work, or at home. Um, pop tube, T-U-B-E, in the comments. Pop tube in the comments if you want to have the whole weekend of JT in the raw. I'll send you our link to our YouTube channel, and you can watch all 80 episodes. I know you're just dying to do that. Um, and please, feel free to tag any colleagues or people you know or even your enemies, although I'm not sure why you'd have any enemies that are friends on Facebook. I've got no idea. But anybody you think that could benefit from today's show, I'd be very grateful. You know, we talked about leadership. So if you think they could learn from that or they could benefit from that, please tag them in the comments below. I'd be really grateful. It's just how the show grows and we get lots more people watching each week and I am very thankful for that. As always, thank you for tuning in today uh, on a long weekend here in Australia or wherever you are in the world watching live or on replay. Thank you for tuning in today. It is a very special day down under for all us Aussies. So uh, for the Aussies out there, I want to give you a shout out. Jamie Hayes, good morning. He says, good day which is Australian for hello. Enjoy the time today with your family um, and your friends. Uh, please take a couple of minutes just to realise how lucky we are to live in such a wonderful and beautiful country. So that's about it for... Oh, hang on. I didn't forget. Did you forget? I didn't forget. Quote of the week. Here it is. It's a long one, so I'm going to read it first. As the leader... You must project calmness, confidence, and competence. Your team will see your actions as an example of how to respond. G'day, Simon Hall. You got in just in time for Quote of the Week. Quote of the Week. As the leader, you must project calmness, confidence, and competence. Your team will see your actions as an example of of how to respond. Thanks for tuning in to JT in the Raw, show 80. It's been great having you. Have an awesome weekend. I'll catch you on the flip side.